The Chiefs took on the Patriots in a barn burner and proved that they are still a contender in the AFC. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and everything else coming at you right now. Welcome to RGR Football. If you're new around here, I'm Ryan and I'm going rogue. This is my take on the Chiefs and the NFL and the AFC West in particular. We'll talk about that in a second. If you're an old hand, thanks for coming back. Uh, all you new guys, hit that subscribe and the notification. Uh, leave your comments and hit that thumbs up if you like what you see. A uh, little AFC West update first, uh, just to get us rolling. And that is that the Chiefs are on top. Uh, the Chargers, who they beat early on in the season... Uh, have kind of found their stride, and they're coming on pretty good, uh, making sure that they're still in contention. And if you caught any of uh, the appearances that I made on SB Nation Radio or ESPN early in the season, that's pretty much what I said was going to happen, that the Chiefs and Chargers are going to be the leaders of this division. Uh, the Broncos are going to be somewhere in between because they are very talented in a lot of ways, uh, and that the Raiders were going to struggle, and it certainly appears that they are. Um, they've been doing a couple of things, and we'll get to some of that in a bit as well. <clears throat> now, across the AFC, this was a, a lot of disappointment for Chiefs fans, but got to remember, it's one game at home uh, for the Patriots. They, they do well in their own environment, although the Chiefs have had some success there. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Chiefs still have the best record in the AFC. They are still the number one seed at this point uh, and can point to that. It's something worth trying to hang on to, but I definitely think that they can. Uh, and that's what they have to do going forward. After this game, they came out feeling pretty good about it. Uh, the locker room was reportedly very positive, very optimistic that they had come in, done a lot of what they wanted to do. Obviously, they fell short. Uh, there were some offensive plays left on the field. There was a lot of defense that can be cleaned up. And they feel that they are on the right path. And that measuring stick against the Patriots at home is a good one. Uh, you saw it reflected in, in all the major media's uh, power rankings and all that. So uh, not really a down note here. Yeah, they could have been better. They could have been a lot worse. And besides being on top of the AFC, you have to also understand that they are third in the NFL for point differential. Uh, 43 points ahead uh, on the positive side. Uh, yes, the Rams are ahead of them, uh, and, and another team as well. There, there are a couple of tied there at 43 as, as well, but the Chiefs are number three. Uh, there's still a lot of room for improvement on the defense, and I think that number can be increased as they get into the second part of the season. We're going to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals coming up in the uh, game plan video here in a couple of days, and check out the podcast because we had a great crossover from uh, some local media there. Uh, that's going to be a game, but beyond that, you have to feel like the Chiefs are in a good position to keep rolling. Now, Patrick Mahomes was the leader of this kind of resilient performance and a major reason why they can feel uh, very confident going forward. Uh, confident in themselves, confident in their ability to come back, confident in their ability to adapt to what they're seeing. Uh, it's, there's a lot that goes into that formula, but Patrick Mahomes in particular was kind of the crucible after the first half where he made some mistakes. Obviously, the interception uh, was well designed by the Patriots uh, looking for what he does. Uh, we'll have some film on that. But also, it just was a little misfiring, a little, little too hyped, a little over the top. It came back in the second half and settled that way down. And you could see by his performance in the second half that he was able to get on track. And that's something that talks to the maturity of a young quarterback like that. Uh, a lot of positive comments coming out of the Patriots locker room following that game. And that's something that also gives you a clue as to how the quarterback is performing in the eyes of the opponents. That said, still not quite there. He had the power, I think, to win this game if he, if he had just hit a couple of things early. And I know he wishes he had some of those throws back. Uh, this next game is going to be another good test with a solid defense. And I think you're going to see him rise to the occasion. Now, the other guy that's rising is Kareem Hunt. And he's starting to look like that guy we saw last season. He's getting that, that anger back in his run. And I think it's, it's partially due to the Patriots uh, and the fact that he sprung on the scene so well last season as a rookie. Uh, he definitely had an attitude running the ball. I think he looked right. Average eight yards a carry against the Patriots. Would have liked to have seen them use him a little bit more. Uh, only 10 carries. But when you get those kind of chunks, that's what this offense needs. And it's not just Kareem. Uh, Kareem's doing a great job. He's running well. He's staying balanced. Uh, he's obviously catching well because 
there are plays that prove just what a receiver he is. Oddly enough, uh, the one that he caught this long touchdown on was also very, very similar to the same pattern he ran last year. Uh, but on the ground, we have to talk about what's going on with the offensive line. Uh, the Chiefs actually made a signing and brought back Jeff Allen, who played for the team a couple of years ago, signed him as a free agent. Uh, Mitch Morse went out in this last game against the Patriots, and it looks like that's an indicator that, that Mitch is going to be out for a while. Uh, don't know exactly how they're going to try to use Jeff Allen. He started for this team before, but he's been out of football for a while. We'll see what happens. But the guys that they had in there taking over against the Patriots did a good job. They were able to make blocks and spring runs for Kareem Hunt. And as good as any running back is, they have to have a good line as well, or, or they don't get out of the backfield. That's just the way that it works. Uh, in particular, uh, Jordan Devy. Uh, playing in at guard, starting for LDT until Morse got hurt, and then he had to move into center, uh, replaced by Wiley, a kid that we saw late in the preseason, uh, who had a lot of good things going for him. And he's going to get a lot of reps now, as far as we see at, at the right guard spot. Uh, and they did particularly good on this long run for Kareem Hunt. Now, Kareem Hunt's going to actually bend this back, but pay attention to the center and the right guard. Now, this is Wiley and Devi, and they give him a great push. These guys filling in give Kareem Hunt the option to bend this back. And it goes for a long gain, but a lot of it is dependent on the block that he's going to get from these two guys. And as he starts off from the far side, he's going to get that first surge. He's looking to go to the right-hand side and see how they come off the ball. And they're making a crease for him. Devy in particular is getting downfield. Wiley picks up the pace and gives Kareem this chance to cut left and get into the open. This is a block that takes you know power, takes attitude, and it brings something to this offensive line that as the Chiefs go on and they have this kind of matchup where teams are trying to stop the pass, they're trying to stay in these deeper zones, what they have to do is take advantage of what's happening against the run. We're going to see as this play starts that both Wiley and Devi get some good takeoff off the ball and get their guys going the right direction. It gives Kareem a place to go. The play's meant to go to the right, uh, but they give him enough push off of the ball that allows him to cut it back to the left-hand side and make a lot of yardage. Now, as he comes down, takes the handoff. Kelsey's coming out for the kick out. Devi, Wiley, Schwartz, Irving, big wall. They all come back. Kareem can cut left into the open and has a nice bit of room to run through. As he does that, it's all because of that offensive line. Now the Chiefs need to see a lot more of that. And I think as defenses try to play farther and farther back, uh, as we've been talking about all season, I told you they're going to go to the more cover four, cover three zones, deeper zones, try to keep things in front of them. Uh, although Tariq can get behind them anytime that he wants, pretty much. You saw him do that uh, very effectively. And despite that, I think that opens up the run game. They, they're going to be forced to rely on the run game, and that's something uh, that it looks like they're starting to gear up towards, and I'm excited about that. I want to see Sherman used a little bit more, but you know how that goes. Uh, on the defensive side, a couple of things really stand out. And I know Breland Speaks has taken a lot of static for his letting go of Tom Brady. Um, and whether he thought the ball was away or not, uh, he's got to live up to that. And, and next time, he's got to finish that play one way or the other. Uh, doesn't mean yet you have to go out of your way to take a guy to the ground or, or to uh, you know try to kill the play before it's over. Uh, even if it's away, you have to finish that. Um, and I want to see him mature from this. It's... It's kind of a big load. Uh, he was clearly distraught after the game, according to, to the guys I talked to that were in the locker room. And I can understand that. But if he can learn for it, it helps him. And I thought he got a much better push against the Patriots than he did previously. I think he's building. I think he's doing some good things. Uh, we're going to look at a play here where it's all about effort. And I think that's really important for Breland Speaks. This play is going to show Speaks doing a little bit of everything. Starts in coverage realizes that his guy is also already covered, turns around, decides that he can rush, runs a long way. I have to give him credit. He was winded last week, makes his way to Brady, and actually causes that fumble. Now, maybe this was a missed assignment originally that he dropped in the first place, uh, or maybe it was just a heads-up play that he, he realized he could release and get some action. But what he does is stick with the play, and despite being uh, pretty winded last week, ran a long ways on this particular play. And you can see him come in here at the end, making his way to Brady, gets a little hung up, 
but stays with it, makes the play and the connection, hits him in the arm, and then Alan Bailey recovers. And now we come to the inside linebackers. And a lot's going on here. We have to talk about the starters. But one thing of, of interest, the, the Raiders cut Derek Johnson this week. He has not played for them very much. Derek's clearly at the end of his career. Uh, we didn't see him perform very well in Kansas City last year, but I think he'd be a great coach. I think he'd be somebody that could maybe come in and help Raglan and Hitchens pretty immediately just by his experience playing for Bob. Uh, and you'll see what Raglan and Hitchens are dealing with here is, is that I don't know if it's coaching. I don't know if it's it's overload in their responsibilities that they're processing slow, but there's definitely a hesitation and you see it a lot. It's not constant because there are plays that show up uh, and, and show you exactly what they can do. When they're allowed to be aggressive and attack downhill and they can execute that, that, that that's where they're at their best, particularly Raglan in the run. Uh, but for some reason, you see this kind of hesitation with them. And that's really, I think, what's slowing them down as defenders. And, and it's fair that they're both overmatched when it comes to taking guys out of the backfield and covering them man on man. Uh, even Hitchens, who played zone, I felt fairly well in, in Dallas and was at least competent in zone coverage, was never competent in man on man. He, he doesn't have the speed to keep up with running backs. Uh, and it's been that day since day one. I told you that when he got signed. Uh, and nothing's changed, but they continue to put him in, in positions that I think are, are hurting his chances of performing well. So I, I'd like to see some adaptation there. I'd like to see them stick to more of an under zone look for those linebackers and not try to saddle them with responsibilities. In order to do that, they have to have good safety play. And I think Jordan Lucas has shown me now. I was a little bit hesitant after one game, but he showed up in the second game as well. Um, he's got some spark to him. He's able to make plays. He reads things quickly, and even in run support, he's able to come up. Now, he is a smaller guy, and so there are times when he's going to get beat up, and there's no question about that just because of his size. All this hinges on eventually getting Eric Berry back. If you can get Barry, you have that rover in the middle, you have Parker in the back. That is a workable duo that allows you to let the linebackers stay in under zones and man those middle spots where they don't have to track running backs out of the backfield. And that that's what I think has to happen in order for this defense to solidify against the pass, at least in the, the shorter range. Um, we can talk about why it is, but this is how Bob Sutton runs his defense. Uh, and until he is no longer the defensive coordinator, that's the way it's going to be. We'll talk about that and whether he should be at a later time. But right now, these players have to tackle better. They have to make sure that they're aware. And I just want to see them take the hesitation out of their play. When they're aggressive, everything flows better. And I think the front seven as a whole functions better. Uh, hopefully, they can improve that. Hopefully, the Chiefs can get over some of their injuries. Get Justin Houston back. I think that will help as well. Um, it will give... Breland speaks a chance to take a breather uh, and not have that pressure and learn from some of his things. He's got a lot of film work to do, and I think when he sees what he's doing, I think as he plays in a shape, he's going to be much better down the stretch. Uh, hopefully, Tano Passanio gets back as well. Uh, but I think the unheralded group is the defensive linemen. Uh, as a group, they are playing very well. Uh, it came out in PFF's rankings this week that Derek Nottie's in the top 20 in run defenders in this league, and that is a great thing. For a third round pick to come in, play in a non-starter role, and be able to put up those kind of numbers. I'm very impressed with his play. He might be the selection of this draft at this point. Uh, and he may be permanently as well. Let me know what you think of these guys, particularly on the defense. I think we know what Pat Mahomes is going to do. I, I think we understand where he's at and just what kind of level he's pushing to get to. But the defense has to be fixed, and it may have to be fixed with guys that are on this roster. So let me know what you think. Put it all down in the comments. Uh, be nice to each other. And I appreciate all of your time. Thank you for watching me today. I'm going to have a live uh, after the game. Um, I'm going to try to do it Sunday night again. Monday didn't really work for many people. So we'll try that. Make sure you check out the game plan video that will come out here on Friday. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you then.